George's Bartlett and Thomas had a day to remember in Taunton, but Leicestershire pulled off a rather incredible four-wicket win, which leaves Somerset facing tough progress to the next stage of the One Day Cup. Put into bat, Stephen Davis got off to a flying start as he helped himself to 13 runs in the game's second over, including three successive boundaries. This immediately looked like a belter of a surface, and those present were able to settle in for a feast of runs. However, Sam Young was unable to take advantage as he nicked off to Ben Mike for 12 in the eighth over. While Eddie Byram followed in the next one for seven, guiding a ball from Ed Barnes to slip. Somerset getting to 52 for two after the 10 overs of power play. Davis was dominating the scoring at this stage and now in the company of James Hildreth, continue to do so. He's striking the first six of the match in the 14th over. Hildreth was out for 11, strangled down the leg side by Mike. The hosts left on 81 for three and by no means having it all their own way. Davis has been in excellent form at the top of the order in this competition and a fine leg glance brought him his fifth four to take him to another half century, this one occupying 57 balls but he continued to lose partners at the other end. Lewis Goldsworthy the next to be on his way as he was superbly stumped, out for seven. And Somerset were in some trouble in the next over, the 22nd. Davis giving Harry Swindles yet more work to do as he fell for 61. This was not in the script with the home team posting a score of 116 for five at the halfway stage of their innings. The debutant Thomas was soon showing all why he was selected for this important contest. Meanwhile, Bartlett took an age to get going, making 11 from his first 30 deliveries. But what happened next was certainly worth the wait. Into the 31st over, and he dramatically began to change the fortunes of his team. He went big again off Ed Barnes, and that gave his partner some confidence too. Thomas eased George Rhodes over the boundary as suddenly this pair made batting look all too easy. Take this shot as an example of that. Bartlett with his fourth maximum, which took him to only his second 50 in this format. And after that patient start, it had arrived off just 51 balls. Another six had him at his best score in white ball cricket. And before long, he and Thomas had posted a hundred run stand. Thomas secured his 50 on debut off 63 balls and neither he nor his equally young partner appeared in any mood to stop the slaughter. This was scintillating stuff. Bartlett will surely remember this day for a long time. Another big hit taking him into the 90s. While Thomas went large once more to take the sixth wicket partnership to 150. Those runs coming off 141 balls. With five overs remaining, they'd pushed the total up to 250. By now, Bartlett was acting like this was a fun game on Western Beach. It mattered not where the ball was bowled. He was at his century in the 47th over. He'd struck seven sixes and four fours in a knot which had occupied only 84 balls. And remember, he had only 11 for his first 30. I can't imagine that Thomas has ever had this much fun. He must have been jangling with nerves at the start and then when he came in with his side in some bother and needing an innings of maturity to get out of it. A short while later and he was belting the ball to all parts. Two successive sixes carrying him to 75 and this partnership to 182. He lost his middle stump next ball but left the field doubtlessly buzzing from his achievements as were those lucky enough to witness it. The 48th over included that wicket, but also cost 26 runs, the returning Marchant de Langer immediately carrying on the carnage. Bartlett added an 8-6 to his tally before departing in the last over for 108. A wonderful, wonderful knock. Somerset concluding their 50 overs on 326 for 7, a total which seemed impossible not long before. The Foxes needed a bright start to their reply and that was provided by Swindles and Rishi Patel who removed 49 runs from that target in quick time. Swindles innings was ended in the ninth over, a leading edge off Sonny Barker carrying to Young. 
Rose was then trapped bang in front for a duck by Josh Davey. And when Ned Leonard bagged his maiden Somerset wicket, Patel driving to Hildreth after making 40, the visitors were on 85 for three in the 17th over. But as Somerset had done earlier, Leicestershire found a couple of batsmen to build an important partnership. Aaron Lilly particularly impressive as he raced to 39 from 20 balls. But his next one saw his downfall. He connected well with a shot off Baker, but picked out Leonard in the deep. His side now on 146 for four in the 23rd over. After 30, with 20 more to go, Lewis Hill had posted a 50 and reduced the target to 139. Gettable on a batting surface as good as this one. We had a game on and Hill upset Thomas's day a tad by taking 15 runs off his first over. Backed up well by Lewis Kimber, who reached his maiden 50 with a 6, his mark reached from 46 balls. Leicestershire were in with a shout. What happened next was scarcely believable. Delanger overstepped next ball, then did so again, the free hit being smashed into the distance. A second free hit was also struck over the rope, meaning that 16 runs had come off one ball. Yes, you heard that right. The over cost 29, and suddenly the match had gone. Unbelievably, having needed 139 runs from 20 overs for an extraordinary victory, Leicestershire now required only 37 for the final 10, and Kimber was not finished yet. Hill completed his 100 off 95 balls, yet it was he that was left to admire the match-altering assault by Kimber. He'd only batted four times before in this competition and had made 49 runs in total. Here he hit 85 in a flash. In trying to smash Leonard for a third successive six, he perished, holding out to Byram, but even the home faithful had to admit that they had seen something rather special. The rest was a breeze for the visitors. Mike proved that somehow Somerset's big total was nowhere near enough. Remarkably, the target of 327 chased down with 32 balls unused in spite of the late loss of Hill for 107. Goldsworthy with a consolation wicket. Somerset were probably shell-shocked as they lost by four wickets and now know that only a win at Warwickshire on Thursday will give them any chance of qualification for the knockout stages.